All right. So this is what's going to go on for the midterm. I'm going to explain a little bit of the format, the type of questions you'll see, and uh, the topics that will be covered in the midterm exam. So first off, the exam is on October 23rd. It's going to, I'm going to open it up at 11 a.m. And it will close at 11 p.m. So somewhere around that time, I know people have different schedules and stuff, but somewhere around that time, you should be able to submit your final exam. Now, the topics that are going to be covered are everything that we've been going over since week one. We're going all the way back to more reasoning, logic, uh, argument structures, what is a valid argument, what is a sound argument. I'll ask questions along the lines is, I'll give you an example of an argument, and then you may have to tell me, is this a valid argument or not? Is it a sound argument or not? What type of structure is the argument? So we talked about a couple of structures, modus ponens, modus tollens, uh, those type of structures. Can you recognize those structures? And also the bad structures as well, affirming the consequent and denying the antecedent. Can you spot those type of uh, poor structures too? Where do they fall apart? Can you offer a counterexample to them? So I might ask that as well, just like uh, early quiz, I might I asked you, um, is can you offer a counterexample or are there implied premises here? Those are things that you'll see on the midterm. Meta ethics is going to be discussed as well. So we spent a lot of time talking about the different meta ethical theories of ethical subjectivism, cultural relativism. There may be questions about Harry Gensler and A.L. Mackey. Those papers we read over, uh, definitely we had discussion questions over that type of stuff. So a lot of the stuff that we covered, especially maybe perhaps in the discussion section of the course, will come up again in the midterm. So don't forget those. And next we're going to move to value theory. We talked about hedonism and desire satisfaction theory and why those theories try but fail on a number of different issues. So you should know not just those, but all the theories that we covered so far, what are the problems with those theories? Why don't they work? What do they need improvement? Uh, where do they fail in providing good moral guidance? Uh, we talked about Mill, John Stuart Mill, and his defense of hedonism. Maybe questions about that. And then finally, uh, the two normative theories that we covered so far uh, with morality and religion and the divine command theory and natural law theory. Also, with that, I have Euthyphro, which is the text by Plato that you should have uh, submitted your quiz over. That is also going to come up again because that's a really important issue uh, with regards to morality and religion. So, those are the overall basic topics that are going to be covered. Now, what does the uh, midterm exam look like? Well, it's going to consist of a mixture of different type of questions. There's going to be multiple choice and fill in the blank type questions. Those are going to be worth two points. There are going to be short answer questions. Those type of questions are going to be worth five points. And I do have the restriction there that they should be at least uh, three paragraphs. So. So keep that in mind as well. Just like the discussion board submissions, you should have full, well thought out answers uh, for those short answer uh, questions. And so you can get all five points for each question. And then the long answer questions are three or more paragraphs long. And those are going to be worth 10 points. So if you put it all together, the test is going to be 40 points in total. So I'm going to divide that 40 points between these three type of questions. So you see a lot of the points are going to be are going to be weighted towards the long answer questions since they're each worth 10 points, right? So you might want to spend a lot of your time there. You might want to concentrate a lot of your time in writing a good full um, response to a long answer question. Now, what do I mean by short answer 
or long answer questions. Most of us know what a multiple choice looks like or fill in the blank, but maybe not all of us know what I expect for a short answer or a long answer type question. So a short answer type question will be something like this. What does it mean to say that something is intrinsically valuable? Give your own example, not an example from the text or lectures and quizzes. How is this an example of an intrinsic value? So you can see right away there's different parts of this question that there's different elements to it. So first define, well, what does it mean to say that something is intrinsically valuable? Now, if you just copy and paste the definition from the book, that doesn't really help. What you want to do is imagine that your reader, and this will help you definitely later when we get to the final paper, that you want to imagine your reader doesn't know too much about ethics or anything about ethics. So you're going to have to walk them through exactly what an intrinsic value is. How is something intrinsically valuable? And then how you illustrate that and kind of drive the point home, you develop an example. Now, don't just copy and paste somebody else's example. Give an example that you understand. It's your own example. Um, what happens, I think, a lot is that people try to copy and paste other people's examples, but if the person is confused already, just copy and pasting an answer to them doesn't really help them. You want to talk to them again like they are completely new to the subject. And so we talked about this, uh, we talked about value theory, right? Uh, happiness, autonomy, justice, those were examples of intrinsic values. So, okay, if those are intrinsic values, how do they work? Why are they intrinsic? Give your, an give your reader a full answer. And this is why I said, it's gonna take at least three paragraphs or more to give them a good justified answer for that type of question. So of course, I'm not gonna give you this question, but something along those lines in the midterm about those topics that I just mentioned. Now the long answer questions, these are more complicated. This is when you're really getting into the theory and applying it. So and how do I uh, want you to approach this and to see if you really understand the theory, I'm gonna present a, a real life scenario, something that maybe I got from the headlines of the news or something like that. And how is that going to be connected to the theory that we talked about, the issue that we talked about? So this is an example I've used before. Um, we're not there yet when we talk about social contract. We'll talk about it later. But what this example is doing is that it's relating the news story that happened in Juanes to what we talked about in the book and how the theory works and how it doesn't work. What are the problems with the theory? Why doesn't the theory really help in this real life situation? Doesn't it really explain everything that it should? So when you approach this type of question, clearly state your position. So if you're saying, well, it doesn't really answer all the questions, why? Let me explain, right? Give me where you're coming from. And remember to be clear and precise. So Again, when you paraphrase, make sure when you paraphrase, you're not just copying and pasting what somebody said, or even just cutting out some words and putting your own words and then saying, well, it's in my own words. It doesn't really work. What you want to do instead is explain it to your reader, again, like they know nothing about the topic or the subject. How would you really simplify it? So somebody, any regular person can understand uh, these complicated issues. So what would a good answer look like? And I said it should be at least uh, more than three paragraphs, right? Well, first you're gonna look at defining the theory. If I say I have a question about natural law or, or divine command theory, explain. Don't just assume that your reader knows what you're talking about. You gotta sit there and like I said, guide them through. Paraphrasing. Explain it, but explain it in a simpler way than the book does. And that shows me you really understand what you're talking about. If you're relying too much on the book to put it into your own words, then 
That's where I'm having doubt. That's where it's not very convincing. That's why I said be clear and precise. So here's an example of on that topic that I that I use right now for a long answer question. This I thought was a really good response from students. Notice it's going to be more than three paragraphs. Notice at the beginning they have an introduction and they're explaining, you know, what is going on, what is the situation, and then look at in the second paragraph. They start. You don't have to go through every detail. I know the text is a little small, but they're explaining what they're going to talk about. What's the theory? What does this have to do with the news story, right? And they're explaining the news story a little bit too, and saying, well, okay. What's the difficulty here? Why don't, uh, why doesn't the theory really work with this real life situation? And then they're breaking it down at the end, right? And they're telling me exactly where the theory went wrong, why the theory is not working. And so you see, it's a, it's kind of a mini essay. It's you're giving me a little bit of an introduction, you're giving me some points, and you're making a conclusion. And that's what I'll be looking for in the long answer questions. So if you want all full 10 points, make sure you're doing that. And make sure that you proofread as well. That's something I will consider. Are you having correct grammar, spelling, punctuation? Those things matter because I'm you're trying to convince your reader. If the punctuation's off, it doesn't quite make sense, the reader's having a hard time understanding what you're trying to say, then it's not very convincing at the end. So remember those and remember that you're presenting it to somebody who is has no background knowledge on the subject. So don't make a lot of assumptions on what they know. 